Okay, there's two types of multi-boot system that we can aim for. One is where we have multiple operating systems on a single disk and the other is where we have the freedom to have many disks with many different operating systems. Um, I would always choose the latter mainly because I'm not a fan of putting operating systems on the same disk that use primary different partition tables and different file systems. So just a really quick rundown, OS X uses GUID with HFS file system. Uh, Linux uses natively GUID partition table or master boot record with uh, one of the extended file formats which is ext2, 3 or 4. Windows uses master boot record with NTFS or FAT32. Just a really quick explanation of that. We can think of it as like a book. And the book is actually our disk. And the index of the book is the actual partition table. And then we define our, partici uh, our partitions such as pages 1 to 25 and pages 26 to 100. And then the contents of those pages are the actual file systems which are represented on those pages by a different language. Um, and I'm not a fan of mixing and matching things because I have certain goals for my system which are to have every drive bias bootable in case of an OS or bootloader failure. Um, just really quickly, a bootloader is a... You can think of it like a mini program that executes basic code and gets various different parts of information from the computer and passes the variables to the OS along with the execution data and then eventually hands the entire hardware control over to the operating system for the operating system to fully load and there's different types of bootloader. So anyway, <clears throat> how would I set my machine up to be bias bootable in the easiest, quickest fashion possible where the order of things of which I install is irrelevant? Um, I have on my machine probably about six, either six or seven operating systems, maybe even eight. Um, I have OS X, um, which is my main working OS X. I have an OS X maintenance, which I call safe boot as well, which means I can go in there and it's just a basic install that allows me to play with my other primary OS partitions that are also bootable. I've got an OS X install that is a experimental OS X. So if I'm playing about with different modifications and that kind of thing, I can really screw that over and restore it quite easily from images. Um, then I've got Windows 7 and then I've got three versions of Linux, which are CentOS, Fedora and Ubuntu. But I might actually take Fedora off because I don't think I've run it in about six months. Um, but irrelevant to that, how do we get a system like this whereby if anything fails, every drive is still bootable and they all work fine? Well, in myself, I've got OS X as the primary disk. Therefore, it's in SATA port zero. Um, and it's, uh, it's on a fast Western Digital Velociraptor as is Windows 7 is on SATA 1 on the same type of disk. Uh, on SATA 2 is my Fedora, uh, sorry, is my CentOS installation. Um, and I've also got, uh, and then the next disk is Ubuntu and Fedora. And then I've also got a few drives which hold uh, various OS X installations and um, our shared disks also. And then I've got various RAID arrays that are coupled to the machine when I need to. Um, but let's just take an example of installing OS X, Windows and Linux. So first off I would always say that since they use different file types uh, and native partition tables 
<coughs> they need to be on different discs. Um, not doing so in my mind, even though it may work and I may actually do a video on it, is a little bit, I don't know, to me, scary. Um, I wouldn't want a disc to go down and me lose two operating systems, put it that way. So having each disc bias bootable and having them all show up and installing everything in one shot without very much to consider or configure. Well, we've got our three drives plugged in. All we do is I randomly choose between Windows, <laughs> Linux or OS X, pick a disc or a USB key in this case and install it. So I've got OS X in SATA port 0. I unplug every other drive. I install OS X. I make sure it runs fine and once it's set up I'm ready to continue. I then unplug SATA port 0 which is the OS X drive and plug only the Windows 7 drive into SATA port 1 which is the next one. Uh, and then install Windows just fine as it's you know as it's supposed to be itself and then once I'm done with Windows and the stupid amount of updates um, you know the four or five hours of just updating in some cases even more um, then I unplug that drive and plug into SATA port 2 which is a third one along my primary Linux disk of which I install CentOS and then once I'm done, I just plug them all back in, start the machine, and Chimera, which I use as a bootloader available from TonyMacX86.com, maintained by MacMan, um, will actually pick up my boot options and show us a lovely little menu. And it really is that simple to install uh, different OSs and have the choice on startup. The benefit of doing it this way is you can press F12 or F8 depending on your bias to actually bring up a list and choose another disk because each disk is bias bootable so not only can you boot by default to the main primary OSS, uh, OS X disk and get the choice you can also uh, in an emergency or if you're just feeling like it um, boot with the bias choosing the disk and it will just boot and everything will be fine. So I highly recommend this way over any other way.